Good morning. Happy Monday. Welcome to all of you We're on Instagram and YouTube. Happy Monday morning to all of you joining. I am uh, very excited to meet with you this morning. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. And for all of you new joining, this is a daily show. Two parts. We talk about COVID related news to the current moment. And then we also talk about broad um, COVID related news, resources, tips, techniques, tools, all sorts of resources to help you and your families uh, be healthy and safe during this pandemic. So welcome to all of you. I'm curious for all of you tuning in. I always love to hear where you are uh, located. So definitely comment box, co use the comment box in the chat. Let me know what part of the US or the world you are tuning in from. And I have a bunch of world news today we're going to cover, as well as some new uh, guidelines. So those specific CDC guidelines and um, what to do if you test positive or if you're waiting for a positive test. So this is going to be growing the number of people who are going to be getting tests. There's some new FDA um, uh, approvals for batch or uh, group testing that we're going to talk about. Uh, so there's a lot to cover today, and I just want to welcome each and every one of you. It is my honor and pleasure to bring you this news. So I'm excited. I want to thank Pat Wagner, who is our faithful uh, YouTube moderator and the uh, <laughs> the gatekeeper to the crazy uh, that often occurs on YouTube. And usually Mondays are a little wacky. So we'll buckle up, and I am grateful to see all of you today. Um, let's dig into the news. The world, we are at 14.5. 5 million cases. Um, we'll be seeing us moving into the 15 and even potentially the 16 million mark in the next seven days, which is pretty crazy. Uh, the U.S. continues to lead the world. We're at 3.8 uh, million cases. Next up is Brazil. They just surpassed 2 million. So Brazil's at 2 million. India is at 1.1 million. Yesterday, India had their biggest day. They had 39,000 positive cases. So they set a record. Russia is at 777, so 7, 7, 777,000 cases. I do want to make a note. South Africa is moving up in the world, on the world board. Um, so they have now surpassed Chile and uh, Peru. They are at 364,000. We're going to be watching South Africa. It is on... I believe almost every continent here in the U.S. and in the world. Um, just to make some other communication about what's going on in the world, Australia, Melbourne is in there. I think this is now week five of the six week um, shutdown. Um, Melbourne now is mandating mask wearing. So you are allowed to be doing official business. So going to, you know, doctor's office, essential runs, if you might need to uh, hit your doctor, whatnot you know, go to, go to an appointment. Um, then now anybody, anybody who is not staying at home has to wearing a mask, mask inside businesses and folks outside, even if you are, you are going to be sizing and, and there are going to be financial um, penalties Please go with non mask wearing. Uh, um, and I want to make a note. No, we have a whole lot of craziness of um, um, Australia that, that I'm aware of, um, of, of the COVID denied, denying the anti-mask masker. So they just be a, isolated US thing. But at any rate, Hong Kong is very concerned, concerned that they have, they have um, reached the community spread. Uh, um, lots of concerns that they're, that they're able to contain this virus. Um, um, Japan, Japan uh, has c continued their growth, growth in uh, positive cases every day for the last seven days. Yesterday, they posted 664,000 664 positive cases. And in one day, um, some isolated areas. Tokyo is part of it, um, but Japan is starting to get a little, a little more nervous, and we might, we might see some activity from them. The Bahamas has banned U.S. travelers, um, so that is going, going to be something that we that we might um, see, see affect a lot of folks, especially on the eastern coast. coast that you know hit, hit the Bahamas. I saw folks that I know in my Instagram circle. They were all stationing in the Bahamas as far <laughs> because with U.S. dollars has been an um, instances of COVID. And, and so, you know, we are uh, uh, the worst scenario at this point in the world. And th there are going to be ramifications for our lack of uh, stamping out, out this virus. And, and that is that. 
nation with states, um, we've seen, you know, high, high uh, the 38, 39 with in increasing growth that just continues to be the, the content. So, you know, I won't, I won't stall those states, states, but I will say California, um, they, they are at 384,000 this week. They'll probably hit hundred thousand. Uh, so it's, it's possible in the seven to 10 days, California will overtake New York as, as the largest, largest, uh, holder. LA County uh, has had an increase in hospitalizations up to 22 to 2300 hospitalizations. And um, um, Florida, I want to talk to you guys about Florida. You guys, I'm from there and, and I have friends and family down there. So where, where I started my business, I grew up there. I was born in Georgia, but we moved back when I was, or moved there when I was five. So I'm a Floridian. Um, they posted their big day yesterday, not the biggest day, but they had 12. Uh, 12,478 cases in one, one month has tripled their caseload. So they're definitely dealing with exponential growth in the state. Um, their, their running average uh, is positivity rate is very, very, very high. So, uh, you know, one of the things you look at is it is the people who are getting tested when we're double digit positive percent, percent like testing positive, positive percent. Um, that means, means that one out of five, one out of four individuals in Florida, Florida, some areas as one, three have, have COVID. And so, and so that is an indication of, of major, major community spread. Oh, you, you two having issues. Oh, that, that's weird. Okay. Let me just make sure I'm, I'm moved in. There's always usually some Monday issue on YouTube. So YouTube, let me know if you guys are doing okay. I see time's moving over. There's an echo. Echo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me just see if I move this. I, I don't think it's, it's a mic. I think it might be might be YouTube. But just know YouTube. I always post this also also live on Instagram and my Instagram handle is my business natural health health health. So you can see it up there. Natural health resource. Um, and so that also goes uh, on an Instagram TV. So feel free um, to go there. Go there. There. Go. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. On. Just make sure. Yeah, I think I did. I haven't changed, changed things since Saturday. So let's cross our, our fingers. You kind of gets coordinated. Um, but I'll but I'll keep going. And again, you can, you can join me on Instagram. So um, Florida, uh, Miami, Miami did the ICU ICU is one hundred and twenty one percent, and that is that is exponentially growing every every day. And so they have three hundred eighty nine nights for capacity. They are housing five hundred and twenty five five hundred five hundred. Patients, and, and so that is a significant challenge. Um, so peacefully, peacefully happy. Asked a question. Yes, yeah, yeah. very true. Um, there is, is a huge effort to do that. I don't get into that type of question, but yes, yes, that is very true. true. Or at least that's the attempt. I don't know, know how successful it's going to be. But okay, um, Texas. They have 125,000 cases, and they posted 10,000. Uh, plus us cases um, yesterday um, and continue to climb, climb. So Texas, California, Florida, Arizona, there are four, four epicenters center just right behind them, as well as North Carolina. Um, Arizona uh, uh, has had an increase in deaths. They actually had record deaths yesterday, yesterday 147 deaths. And their seven-day um, um, average positive percent is 24.4. That's not not great. And it's a seven day average. Yesterday, yesterday's test, positive test percentage. So out of ev every thousand, uh, nine percent percent of those individuals was tested positive. Um, so that that's that, that's not great. If you live in Arizona. There's mass massive abuse spread, and it's uncontained. There is no way. That, that the state can, can contain it at this point because without any major, major changes because people are waiting and waiting in line for hours. The tests themselves take six and sometimes times nine days to come down back. And in that period of time, people, people may not be quarantining when you're staying at home and they're spreading it. No, knowingly and unknowingly. Um, but regardless, that's actually the main topic of today's video. About what do you do, do if you test a positive, or if you have left like 
last night, Brian got an email, two individuals tested positive asymptomatic at his, his office. He had to do a whole bunch of calls with this team. But these are these are legit questions and and we're digging into that today. Okay, so stick with stick with me. YouTube hoping the echo go, go, goes away. And I saw Lori get out and came back in and said, apologize. Um, um okay. Uh, uh Arizona, they're in, in uh, quite a bit of a bit of mess. Uh Georgia also also we had a third high at our highest um cases back yesterday. And generally generally in Georgia, we have Lower, lower um tests, tests that are posted as this positive on a weekend, which doesn't does not well for us for us here. For any of you Georgia viewers, I actually a viewer and I, I don't remember remember her handle, but I, I know she's probably watching um in stock. So she's she looks really close to us and I'm, I'm excited. I always love running into folks I know know or people are quite that would that would but since we are social distancing, I'm not I'm not doing any of that. So we'll, we'll just have airwaves. Um so George is just definitely in growth mode. North Carolina set up at a big herd yesterday. Um, they are almost at 100,000 cases. North Carolina is in, in a surge mode. Um, so they had 2,500 positive cases yesterday. They will hit probably, um, well, um, they will hit 100,000 in today. It's just a matter of how, how big uh, are they going, going to hit it. Um, Louisiana. I want to make a note of Louisiana. We've kind of been psyched with communicating a lot about what's going on in Louisiana. Initially, we, we saw certain boroughs in Louisiana where there were you know, kind of kind of concentration. That's, that's actually now spread out. The whole entire state is, is dealing with COVID numbers. First, and they actually are the third state uh, in our nation per capita. They have the highest per capita rate of COVID cases. Um, so, so that is very significant for, for any of you who live in Louisiana. You know, definitely make sure you are, are uh, wearing, your, wearing your face masks and social distancing thing. The Teresa, hey, Teresa, Teresa, she's using her daughter's account. Yes. Okay. Um, um, and then also, I just communicate one, one other thing. In Minnesota, Minnesota the governor has, has declared uh, the, the flags fly half, half staff in honor of the COVID um, um, victims and and uh, that's being uh, implemented. I, I believe it so yesterday, but definitely any of you in Minnesota, you'll, you'll fly flags or have staff that had happens to, to you on the COVID victim in your state. Uh, Georgia's flying at half because of John, John Lewis. So I don't know if that's been, been mandated, but I, I know all the business are doing that. Um, okay. okay. So let, let's see. Let's dig into so some research. Okay, okay, so, you know, all of us parents, I started my, my digital online school shop shopping. I love the school school shopping sales and the hauls that you can get with school shopping. And, and this year is going to be a little different, different. We all digital and uh, gather, gathering my supplies. I gather, gather supplies for Gabriel, but also for my business. It's, it's you and I save the most money on, money on everyday items. And, and so, you know, this is of us are thinking about school, thinking about what are we going to, we going to do. We and our family, family are looking at hiring a tutor to come in and, and help teach Gabriel. Gabriel. And uh, the big question is: Is our kids able to tra transmit? Good. There's new research. I want to highlight it. the CDC has, has published research. Okay, it's a, a South Korean study that, that analyzes a very, a very large chunk of uh, um, ch children. Uh, um, and the research is um, specifically identifying are kids able to trend trend and are there different differences in certain age groups? So, you know, we have a four year old, soon to be year old in September. You know, he, he's a small little body, small little lung sinuses, you know, he's, but highly social engaged and has no sort of sense of um, personal space or social distance. And there are our children that are in, you know, middle, elementary, middle, high school um, that are grown. I mean, you know, 11 and 12, 12 year old kids look like adults sometimes nowadays. So the research specifically is there any distinct between the ages? And what they've come to, to identify is that, is that 10 years old is that kind of threshold. Old. Children under 10. 10 um, and this was just printed in, in terms of community or familial really spread. So the, so the children, families, will use likelihood of their uh, spreading, spreading or being infected, infected COVID. So specifically, specifically the transmission, 
children under the age of 10 were 5.3% like likely to transmit COVID to fam family, you know, teachers or whatnot. Now, 10 and 10 to 19, they, they are, their transmission rates are just, are just like adults. So, so this is like kind of critical when schools are, schools are looking at, okay, who opens, who we open, there's going to be a very, very dose for the kids, it's Gabriel's age, preschool, school, elementary, entry. And there would be for, I think, what, what, 10 is what, is what, fourth and grade, if I recall, <clears throat> probably fourth, fifth grade, fifth grade. I was on the, on the younger, younger side, I can't remember. Um, but that's going to be critical. If you are dealing with a middle school, school and high school, you're, you're an administrator, school coach, or teacher, you, you know, you're involved as a therapeutic resource, PT, special ed, whatnot. The, the and then older, you have to treat them like adults. And so that, that might also play into how do school system, systems, um, how do they require, you know, you know mask wearing? Do we, do we need necessarily... Um, and, and this, just, I'm putting this out there, out there, not, not a statement. Okay. okay. Um, um, but you know, do five year five year olds need to be wearing masks as a 10 year old old first. So there's, there's this, and two, you know, did another play play day yesterday. We did well, but boys wear their masks. They're, they're getting used to it. But, oh my gosh. I mean, I mean, the mask, you know, it was hot out, out early on a, on a Sunday morning. They bike, bike out there for about and a half there was there was there were holes going on on there was chalking and then right riding bikes and talk talk about sweat. the thing was wet they had chalk stains stains over it and and then we went we they did we did snack time and so so it was all messy see and that's the reality of what kids, kids are going to be you know schools schools are going to be looking at but um this south south instead it is published the cdc and we want to give this of the CC props. They are continuing to follow science and research. Um, and this research, I'm hoping, is, is going to be factored into, into the school system's uh, determination of how to specifically address the different kids, different groups, um, and to protect all parts in the classroom. But, you know, the distinction, 10, 5.3% 5, 5 transmission rate, 10, 10 older, 10, 10 to 19, 18.6%. Those aren't great percent, percentages. Even five, five, not, not comfortable with. with. Um, so that's big, big news. Um, um, you might hear a lot about it about today. More than likely it is going, going to hit our waves um, because as school is the topic at hand. Um, also, as far as, far as traveling, um, I don't know if I mentioned this before, or, but I don't remember. Uh, it's uh, the Bahamas. Yes, I, I did mention the Bahamas has, has been U.S. travelers. Well, we're also, we're also able to travel, travel, airline travel. Delta is asking those who um, cannot wear a mask for mostly health, health reason. Um, and remember those those cards that, you know, you know the mask exemption card, that's bogus. The FBI guys that they done, it's a total scam. Um, but they are le legit individual individuals who can't wear masks. Okay, for an assortment of reasons, they are asking them to stay at home and to not travel. I mean, real, real. If you have a health health condition where you can't wear a mask, you're at great, great risk. There's no reason for you crossing state lines, even in your cars, cars staying home. This is not the time to, to go vacation. And, um, so common sense needs to prevail here. But if if you won't or you refuse to or you need to travel for what for what maybe you're in the healthcare world. world Whatever, um, um, Delta is going to require that you pass um, a complete health screening, and you're going to do this, this virtually um, with a partner. So, so either a, a nurse, uh, nurse, nurse practitioner, or PA or doctor. They're contracting a, com a company called Dat MD, and they will be um, conducting the, these health screens. And I think that's very interesting. Delta Delta's taken the, the, the you know the the the, the reins. Here. We we might see this come into play with other uh, carriers. So this is just a sense that airline tra travel is a risk. And if you don't believe it, if a company is going to, to employ a requirement for a health screening, it looks like it gets. I didn't get get into the details. It looks Delta might might be financing this. I'm not sure. Um, um, but you're you're going to have to meet and have a consult with a doc doctor, and from from that get cleared 
and it's okay. Okay. But there's going to be a requirement that you de demonstrate through this health health screening that you have a low risk. Um, to that, that note, the risk, let's talk about a new risk. This is, I feel like this is one of those bah things. I mean, if, if you are dealing with this, you are, you are already nervous. Um, but the CDC also added to you the list of folks who are at most risk. They've added can cancer pens. Um, and so that includes active cancer patients and, and those who are recovering with, with a certain period of time. Um, um, there are individuals that are still having cancer screenings and, and you don't want those off. I mean, if you are in an active state, what I had mentioned a month ago, clinicians and cancer docs are um, using, using innovative ways to offer and make sure for folks following cancer um, treatments. And it's, it's, it's allowing them to get a little, a little, little bit more strategic. They're actually scaling back like, on, on a radiation you're getting. They might be giving you a pill, chemo versus, versus you know, infusion when we're in the clinic for um, um, might actually bode, bode well because that's advanced or treatments um, and is meeting some, some of the items that I talk about at the cancer conference. These are Conferences, cancer doctors, doctors about the latest research. There are, you know, the pharma companies that are talking about, talking about, you know, these trials, or we're now entering phase, you know, twelve years to fifth to fifteen years. Look at this, what we're seeing. That is critical. It's important, important to know, you know, if you have cancer and you've got out again an airplane. And I used to work with folks that came into the National Institutes of Health Health Cancer Center that were from all over because they because they had a rare cancer. They can't avoid that. That and um, in Atlanta, any time you travel, you see a lot, a lot of folks coming coming into Emory, and you see them in wheelchairs. And they're obvious, it's obvious that they're here for health care. Um, so there is a, a medical uh, related travel industry that um, Delta is trying to make sure that it's safe. So I just want that out there. Uh, also, also, on a little bit of a diff different note. But any of you, any of you who have been, been on, uh, or receiving unemployment, that six hundred dollar additional benefit from the CARES Act, I believe it was, it was the CARES Act. Um, they that route. This is the last week. The six hundred dollars will be uh, um, hitting your account, and um, you, know, you know, this is something I think we're all going going to have to pray for if um, um, folks still need that that, that additional funding. Um, that we might, we might feel really, really, really high intense economic strain in, in August and then beyond um, with, you know, you know, folks that are not working in restaurants and bars and service industry. It's, it's quite overwhelming. And it's just stress too. too. Um, okay. So the other thing I want to highlight, highlight, we get into the major, major kind of uh, detail about if, if you're positive or if you're, if you're being on a test. Um, FDA did okay. They gave the green light for, for um, pool testing. So it is basically where, for instance, it was discussed at, at like university. So let's say you are when you're going to go, go like, no, Princeton, you know, the folks are going to class. class. Let's just use that as an example. You go on campus. Um, you check into your, your dorm. One of the first things probably that you've done in checking in and, re and registering, you might have had a COVID test. Um, what they're going to do is so instead of testing one per person, so there might be five, 500, 500 kids dorm, they're, they're going to run 500 batches. So send, send all those in and have, have one single test, test come back. If there is a ne negative, then all clear. All 500 kids are clear. If there's a positive, now this is a real broad, broad example, but if it's a pos positive, then they'll do individual title test. But it allows, allows them to send the fact that we, we have a testing shortage and testing delays and turning, turning things around. Um, this highlighted, I want to say three weeks ago, it's been a little bit of a process with the FDA. FDA. Quest Labs is, is the lab running that. I also want to make, make a Quest um, in the last two or three weeks has had 50, 70 cent increases week over week of, of their testing capacity and we're maxed out. So I don't know if that's a way of trying to, trying to circumvent, uh, but these batch tests are also going to burden bur the testing uh, capacity. So I don't, I don't know what this is hitting, but I know it got approved and generally like it starts, starts rolling out in a week to 10 days. Um, um, but today, okay, so before we get into this, let me mark um, where, where my little timestamp stamp at 24. Four. Um, before I get in, into today's specific top topic, I'm curious about how many of you 
are have tested, tested positive, um, whether you've been symptomatic or asymptomatic, are currently dealing with COVID, COVID or have tested and are waiting for us. Comment down below. Let me know. You know um, very cur curious about uh, where everybody is with that. Okay. Now, the big thing um, also, though, the CDC has posted some, some new guidance. It's in part due, due to the fact that we have really long delay getting the tests back. Part, part of that concern is that, that we just beyond, beyond primary spread, we're in secondary spread, we're in community-based spread. States like Arizona that are aver averaging 24.4% positive percentages in seven days, that's a major concern. And contact tracing is limited. And so how do we ultimately lower the spread? We have to get control over this. And since the guidelines are they're new, the original kind of guideline was, look, if you have been ex exposed or you're waiting on a 14-day quarantine, um, or actually just more of exposure, like if you got a call, like, like when, you know, got, got this email, if he had been in the office, it'd be a 14 day quarantine for all of us, all of us. Um, and, and he exposed. Now they've ident identified time based and test based isolation, home isolation guidelines. And it goes something like this. If you um, have test tested positive and you're at home, uh, the guidance is stay, stay at quarantine for 10 days and, and or up to the, to the point where you have a full, full 24 hours without a fever, um, and that includes fever-reducing vacation, and you also are out the fever for, for 24 hours, and you haven't had a cough in 24 hours, or, or, and, and you have shortness of breath. So this, again, is where the, these pulse ox uh, monitors are critical as well. You can assess some of the other factors, but shortness of breath is, is often going to accompany lower ox, um, pulse ox levels. But that's what's really critical to think about this. Knowing from just the, the CyberCorp Facebook page group that I've been monitoring, folks have symptoms for, for months. And so th those, those are individuals that under this guidance, if you're dealing with this for four weeks, you are going to be staying at home for, for four weeks. And that might pose as a challenge in your workspace. Um, um, you're returning in physical form. And some, sometimes you might not even, even be able to do digital if you can't breathe, you're coughing a lot. And you're fatigued and you, and you have fever. So time, time base, it's a 10 day minimum, minimum. I want to say that 10 day minimum, minimum. Um, and a critical point is if you've, you've tested positive and you're without a fever for 24 hours or, or the cough, short, shortness of breath. Now, the other thing too, is if you haven't been able to get that second test, so if you're positive, this is where the, the time base comes into play. The idea with, with these guidelines is, is, is um, that you quarantine and up to point where supposedly you would be uh, uh, spreading. But, but we, we all know multiple journal articles, research, I've communicated to all of you since the beginning. And we know that viral spread um, and your viral shedding um, will, will occur sometimes for 59 days after, up to 70 days after you've had a negative test. So your body, some people are super, super shred, uh, super shredders. Is it shredders? Shedding, super sh shedders. <laughs> it's time to us, super shedders. And they, they had a lot more viral um, RNA, RNA, DNA, and might be more contagious. Um, there's a possibility that there are super shedders and super spreaders, that they're the same person. But regardless, this is really, it's its an effort to, to minimize people being out and about, but some lacking points on this. Um, the most conclusive is test-based, but they put in a time base because, because test-based is having the test-based, uh, if you've tested positive, you, you need to get another test. It's taking a long, long time, and sometimes people aren't able to get access to that, to that. you know, you try and, and you get, get in line for eight hours and they were and they were out of the test supplies. You got to do it again the next day. And some people are give, giving up on that. So, so the home ice guidelines are new. new. Um, now this is really, really cool. They also involve a uh, de detail for those asymptomatic cases. Um, they, they encourage uh, folks to 
um, have two tests. So if you're, you're asymptomatic, you can't t- tell when you're going to not be, not be shedding. And so if, if you're symptomatic, this, this is really cool. We need you to take two tests. And we need that to be, to be 24 hours and both need, need to be negative for you to come out of your, your, your quarantine. So this, this is really, really big news. I don't know, no, it's going to get bit buried, but we need to get the word out. And I'm going to, going to work one of my assistants and get some, um, some, uh, images on them, this, and then that way you can, can, you share on Instagram, you can share on Facebook. Um, but we really need to get, to get the word out about the asymptomatic cases that they retest. So just because they tested positive, asymptomatic, like our mayor, she's asymptomatic. Her husband was asymptomatic, technically. Um, she said he was fatigued, fatigued, sleeping a lot, but that is, that's, that's a fixed symptom. If you, if you watch uh, Saturday, Saturday's, you know, there are six types of COVID. He'd fall in the fatigue category. I think it was, I think it was this one, phase one. Yeah, it's one. Actually, 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 uh, four. Um, so that is that is really really essential. If any of you who have have tested positive, you have you have had any um, any challenges, you definitely want to this. You definitely want to have a uh, test come back. Um, I'm seeing folks continue to echo. I, I've tried. I don't know what's going on with you, Echo. You echo. So I apologize. I am live on Instagram. So if you want to bounce over there, there it's now with resources. If you want to find me on Instagram, you'll see the little, the little story. There's a little story thing and I'll have a little red live. You can join me over there if you guys want. Um, but for some, some at, at least connected. So I will say, you know, Friday, Friday, it was Friday. I didn't even get online with you. Um, so I'm great, great for that at least we have an echo and you guys are watching. watching. Okay. Okay. So the, the other thing too is, um, they do have, have not negated the, the original 14 day quarantine um, that they that they they've kid. But but this is the distinction that 14 day quarantine is if you've been exposed, you maybe have symptoms or maybe maybe not. You haven't had a, had a test. So in the example with Brian's work, we get a get a night email to asymptomatic carriers to the asymptomatic positive cases in, in his work. Everybody who, who got email and has been in the office, this would be a blanket thing thing because they closed the stairwell down, down and waiters are only what they're using, right? They would want, want to be, be for, for, for quarantining. Um, how well companies are communicating cases is hit or miss, um, depending on who in the company is in charge of charge of it. Some HR, some, sometimes it's fit. Some of these people might not have medical back, backgrounds or be to date on all, all this data. And there's a lot of moving pieces uh, and da- data where you have to leaf through, through uh, some of the guidance in the CDDC website. But this is really, really essential for, for any of you who might be exposed. You might be getting them those calls from contact tracers um, um, in your area. And 14-day quarantine uh, uh, without a test is guideline. But End of the day, if you have been, been exposed, we need, need to get you tested. I mean, you you for your own sake, we need to make sure sure that you have an awareness of what, what's going on. Lori says, Ant in Florida had chest first, snake, snake second, EOS, no symptoms going going just again in a week. Ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, we um we are definitely seeing a lot of test testing challenges. This is um this is the impact of not taking heed when New York was drowning and us figuring it out. We, we figure it out. Um, you know, you know, it's like dealing with ostrich and then they, they stick heads in the sand la, 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 without dealing with it. And that's what we're dealing with. And you know, the CDC, a lot of their influence has been cut. Um, though their guidance is critical. Still, the research is critical. This re- research already posted um, this South Korean study is as absolutely critical to making our schools safe for teachers, aides, cafeteria workers, jan- janitors, administrators, kids, and any individuals who feel you know complement with, with you know, they do therapies in classrooms, rooms, after school programs, kids kids camps, everything. Um, it comes really 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 critical. American stupidity, yeah. So that is what we're dealing with. With, but really wanted to dig into today was where, where these headlines. And so I want to look and, and kind of see your, your community here. 
Jenny, she misses cross tree shopping. Imagining that's and that's a story. Really fabulous, right, Jenny? Um, Letitia, good morning, Tisha, and Pat, Sue, Terrence, on Ron. Hey, oh, Ron's I, okay. Uh, oh yeah, and it, it is really really hot. Uh, but we are having really crazy heat. That's a whole other, other concern. Um, for some of these testing sites that aren't in cars, even those that are, that are you know, ACs, um, it, uh, you know, it's, it's just a mess, mess, mess. Um, I didn't read the report last week and, and I did have a lot of info. And so I always want to try to try and be on point my info, part of my, my thing. Like I just, I research, I go, I go digging into, into who's been cited in articles and things like, like that. I just don't. One thing you can trust here is I'm not going to just spew you data. I'm not going to take anybody's little email or Instagram message or DM about, oh, I heard so-and-so did, so did block. Nope. I'm going to ask for you to cite your references or at least, or at least give me something about some new drug you're here you're working and, you know, how legit is it? I'm going to ask all those questions. Um, I didn't, I didn't get any of the details and then one of the reasons why I didn't, didn't hide it. But there, there was an instance last, I want to say last week, week um, early last week, a, a gentleman in Utah in a testing like queue in his car passed away. I don't know if it's COVID related or not. That That's a concern because in states like Arizona, you know, a day that that's 39% positive cases, you know, in 300 car, cars, there's going to be quite a few people in there in the cars that, that are ill. Um, and that are dealing with fevers and it's hot and, uh, you know, they might have the gastrointestinal diarrhea. What do you do? You do when you're in the car for hours or you, you have the runs. I mean, this is, this is really, this is really serious. Um, so it just becomes one of those things, um, where I wish we would have gotten this coordinated and, and I'm sorry, but we don't, we don't have the best testing platform for it. We don't test the most. We don't test the most successfully. We have a lot of um, false positives. Um, folks like Lori are seeing some of the ridiculous where folks, you know, have to get swabbed multiple times. We had Scott, Scott on here. I don't know if you're on Scott, but up in uh, Wisconsin, you know, he's, you know, he's, he would wait days. The first, first one was presumed, presumed it was Niv, presumed, presumed positive. So, I mean, I mean, it's just insane. And so, at the end of the day, uh, becomes really, really critical that you you all um, really, really make sure you have the tools and resources at home to so monitor your, your health. And so I have links, links down below. I mean, literally a pulse of socks critical. If you start to develop, to develop any type of symptoms um, that are atypical. So for instance, since he, um, here at home Saturday, Brian started his... his Phase one of like four or five phases of our home remodel this is all because of a flood in our kitchen. And we are in the middle of, of like a kitchen remodel when COVID hit. And so half our floor torn up. I have one countertop that's gone. The sink is gone. We ended up having them bring them plug dishwasher because that was a mess. Um, but at any rate, we are doing some, some stuff house that is yielding. Uh, uh, it's, it's, Yield of that is a lot of dust. And so I'm noticing, like, oh my gosh, I'm, I feel really happy today because, because it's, in our, uh, it's in our master bed, bedroom area. We're doing our stuff. And like, I had to start to, to assess, okay, oh my gosh, you, you know, this is an exposure. <laughs> you start to assess like, like okay, what well, symptoms? Is this allergies? I've been outside, outside a lot. You know, you know um, oh, we've, we've got a home project. Okay, okay. I'm starting to kind of assess. This is probably my source. But if that is, is you, you're thinking, oh my gosh, maybe I went out to that one, one grocery store. Maybe I uh, went to the, to the park and, you know, dog park and walked your dog or your neighborhood and you weren't wearing a mask. And, and there's, I mean, there, the exposure points can be great as we have, have this tense community rise. And what I'm noticing is the survivor group uh, community 
there are a lot of people that can identify exactly where they, they got it. They, March 15th, I was doing X, Y, and Z. I did this. I had this exposure. You know, a lot of, a lot of people flying on airplanes. Somebody two rows to the left in the middle aisle was hacking along along. And, and the air, they had to turn the air off because they were ta taxi, whatever. Like, like people can identify that source. But now, now as we get more and more in the uni spread, it's going to be hard. To be hard. And the fact that, that we are super superseding the capacity for contact tracers in many states like, like Atlanta, we've borrowed uh, contact, contact tracers in New York because we don't have the wherewithal to do that. Uh, um, and get hand handles, community spread is really, really critical. Uh, um, so it, it, it becomes essential that you, you really, really, really have all the tool, tools and races, you, you know, from the mass, mass to the UV, I have, I have my here, to the UV lights, the um, um, HEPA, UV filtration, and kit tools, tools and you know, those are all being set up. I have ordered a whole bunch, whole bunch more of my, um, the first part of HEPA screening. In Viroclats, the, the the mobile UVV and mobile HEPA HEPA air unit, they're amazing, and um, we're, we're using it to get rid of the dust and all and all the stuff that comes with with this <sighs> remodel. We are turning our master. We have a master bedroom alcove that's basically you know, Brian built half. He built out with a wall, and and it's going to turn into our master walking closet, and then we're. And we have this master bed bathroom, and then and adjacent to it um, or connected, we've got the uh, current current mass closet that's going to turn into a laundry room. So Brian, Brian actually, we we did the demo thing where he, he took out part of the wall into the, the current master um, closet because you're going to we needed the wall to be be wider doorway, so widen the doorway so that we can put we can put our washer here in. Um, a project but you know the other thing too, too is some some of you like us you have to we're doing all this to you save time money money most importantly we're, we're not exposed ourselves to any people coming in our house house but we have to have have electrical plumbing come in and so you, you know we need to make sure sure that we have um, some some measurement to, to able to keep our, our home safe and, and those are going to be crit critical elsewhere you know, UV, UV sanitation tool, having, you know, you, you want to make sure for, for, for many who don't have or still having a problem as spikes occur in current areas, it might, might be harder to get the wipes and then the disinfectant items. Make sure you, you grab your force of nature packets and they are, they're, they're very, very, um, they're economical, but they're also reliable. You, can, you always, always have those little packets. Those won't run out. Get those to you immediately, and you can clean everything. Um, Lori says you have your hands full full with permission. Yeah, it's, it's pretty sane. Um, saw your pics. You, you didn't. Look, yeah, I, I didn't. Well, I, so turned turned down, hammered a little bit too, too much. <laughs> so we've got got one whole wall knocked out. It looks cr crazy. Um, yeah, Brian. Yeah, Brian said I would be. <laughs> Um, but we were, were, we did all our stuff. We had, we had the Home Depot ordered, delivered, then, then moved the sheet rock, rock up to a bunch of stuff. So, so we are, we're, we're doing what we can to be safe, safe. And many of you are going to have to do, do the same things and, and, you know, it is, is going to require, we all collectively come together as a community to protect ourselves. And the, the, the guidance here with home isolation is something, something to protect you and you and your families, your loved ones, but it's, it's mainly aimed at, at trying to resist the spread. Asymptomatic care carers are walking around think, thinking they're fine and they're not, um, and, and then they are spreading. And some, some people are, are big time spreaders. They're super spreaders. And uh, we have a lot, a lot of data out of the CDCC, the contact tra tracing is identified Funerals, gatherings at homes, you know, that those are you really want to avoid. avoid. And again, ele elevators are, are awful, awful cesspools of ger germs. And the fact that it's air, an aerosol, aerosol um, airborne related uh, uh, viral transmission, the elevator is just a prime spot for it to spread from person to person. Uh, Pat says she would be interested with a sledgehammer. <laughs> Uh, Brian has, he's got all these new, new tools and stuff. Gabriel, Gabriel's real thing. 
Um, and I mean, this hammer was, hammer was really, it was, it had like this, this whole, this like rubber grip kind of thing. Um, thanks during early. I saw a question about, about like, let's see. Mm -hmm. yes, Neil, I'm aware of the echoing. It just is what it is today. V Vicky, milligram zinc, do we need each day? So it, it depends because a lot, of, a lot of times I'm trying to look at, um, in any of the supplements that I have, like usually you're going to get, get like 10 milligrams in, in average supplement, 10 to 15. Um, um, I actually do a lot of uh, testing thing for, for folks really identify, identify as micronutrients. If you're low on zinc, zinc, you need a lot more, you know, you know, a whole lot, but you need du double with the 10 or 15. Um, Lori, Carrie came to this wipes. Well, you're in luck. Ah, there's a July July discount for some nature. So definitely consider this. This is an electro 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 electrolyzer. Well, it does this whole th thing where it converts. It, you put put you fill, you fill the line with water. You put in salt, vinegar, and the electrolyzer converts it into a, a chemical. Now, natural chemical that kills germs, germs just effectively as bleach and some of the other green chemicals, but but it you run out and I, I'm so excited. They, they were having a lot, lot, they had a lot of, lot of orders in March and April and they're, they had a few, few ship delays, but they're better back on track. So, um, and they're also doing the Facebook, Facebook with caught advertising wise. Uh, let's, let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Live is wonky. Kristen, I don't know. I, having it, it replays okay but it might not but instagram for sure we'll have to we'll have to see see other questions i review i review the oxygen clips most most review or and please um joanne there's a multi multitude of ones i mean i uh i do know that that online um uh, and, and i and i will say this because because i work with a lot of vendors i don't always trust the reviews um, um especially in Amazon. Amazon is really weird. There's, there's a lot of comp competitors who go in and blast off on, off on people. But I mean, what, what you want to find is a, a pulse oximeter that reads heart rate, heart rate and your oxygen levels, levels comfortably. I mean, it, it's not, it's not rocket science, these little things. things. Um, but I would imagine you're going to do Another thing too is time timing. Some companies, um, you know, it's like a three, three, four week delay. Whitney, the force of nature. Um, let's see. Okay. Let's see. Um, let's see. I'm trying, trying to answer any questions. I see. I see. You guys are so great. Great. Um, yeah, so lots, lots of links down below. Um, all right, email. So Jan, Jan's trying to email me. Just email, email Melissa and then at naturalhealthresources.com. Um, I, I never, I, I don't know the technical issues, issues YouTube, but my email is working. Um, all right, so tomorrow I will continue to work news. Um, I'm hoping we have more kind of substantial cl clinical research. I really, today I really want to dig into to the isolation guidelines. These are new. These do need to be communicated. If, if you're in a you know, community kind of organization or leadership in, in churches or community you know, you know, neighborhoods, this is the type of, type of information we need to disseminate the, this, get that out there ASAP. Um, because there's just, there's a lot of, lot of news, um, that's even being covered. And, you know, regarding your thoughts about, about mains news, was, there's just a lot to, lot to digest. And this is a, this is a really element that needs to be communicated. Um, so everybody's loving force and nature. Um, and thanks, thanks, Kristen. She says, I get, I get much off some, some, some info. Um, Oh, good, oh, good. Lori, you got told Tulsi. I have to pick my Tol Tulsi leaves. We have, we have a lot we have to do this week. This week. Okay. Okay. Our crazy dog, third puppy, uh, the one who who is our fence jumper. She dumped the fence yes, yesterday and ran after a deer. deer. Apparently crossed the, the high. <sighs> so oh, we have to call folks in today. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be gonna be a crazy week. I hope you guys are all well. Uh, all wood gems. I love your son is safely playing with a friend. That is his mom and dad involving him. 
in tasks around the house, social, emotional health, health is important. Absolutely. And actually it was something that the mom and I were talk, talking about, you know, we're in, in both kind of same category of like real limited exposure, but not all the families we know are doing that. And, and it, it's, it's, we're grateful. So every Sunday we're doing this plus plate thing. It's just really, really hot in July. <laughs> like 10, it's in the high 90s. I mean, it is hot and steamy. Um, you know, and with like, they're you know, wearing bike, bike mitts. And we have, and we have Gabriel a new bike this week because he's, he's just getting, just getting so tall, outgrown his little, his little bike. Um, but yeah, yeah. So lots of indoor activity, activities this week because of the heat. And definitely take care of, care of, you know, with the heat, make sure, make sure you're getting your multi-minerals. You know, you know, the sweat, uh, um, depending on where you're at, if, if it's, you're going to sweat a lot, a lot, it's a cool, cool system. It's an indication your lymphatic are working. If you don't sweat, a, a sweat a, definitely want to watch some of my lymphatic DIY exercise videos to motivate your lymphatics. Um, if you are out West and it's dry, dry heat, there's, you, you don't know you're sweating. So, so make sure, you know, I, you know, I love coconut water, you know, you know I have these on hand. You, you can really, I, I link these, we, we, I get my Amazon now. I used to get mine, mine at Trader Joe's, I get the big one, ones, but now Trader Joe's, Trader Joe's does no del deliveries, and so I don't support the business that's not working with all of all best to be safe, um, and, and online or ordering or delivery, um, but, you know, you know, make sure you, you do take your, um, food and your liquid multi-minerals just to maintain your mineral levels. Because, because again, you're going to get zinc, zinc, which is critical for your immunity, but you're also going to get magnesium and a bunch of other things that help help you uh, flush excess fluid, fluid and keeps um, 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 swelling at bay. Um, so, so yeah, Terran, Terran's Georgia is a beast of heat, of heat. It is, it is not awful. So, uh, um, yeah, so our dog Daisy. She's so nutty, and you know, you know, what's amazing is the area like right, like right by us. We're we're at a cold cold exact exact live at the beginning beginning of the entrance and it's it, like I say highway it's not a high highway it's a plain road road but it's a main road like like a neighborhood in our area and the deer deer she she had a baby and um we've seen the little, little baby actually she was like like oh my gosh Brian's like oh my gosh it was, a, it was the smallest deer I'd ever seen and, and she's just like bouncing up and down this on this note. Three weeks ago, the baby's gotten bigger. There's one baby, and and the, apparently her her den is in this this little space, and the mom threw Daisy off the den and like kept her running, and Brian, Brian saw where the baby was this uh, last night. We had re Daisy retrieval. So um, I, I swear we have three do dogs. I have a child, and I, and I think the dogs it's like having uh, three additional children. And then one of them is called Chunky Monkey. He might be Mizuki, the white, the white one. <laughs> Needs to lose weight. So she's she's on a weight loss mission. And, um, and Brian's her Chunky Monkey. And he, and her. <laughs> he, 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 he feeds, he does his thing. Uh, you know, the dog is like, he's like him in the morning and the evening. So um, I got to how to get our dog, our dog sized. And it's so hot. And that's the one thing, thing like in Florida, uh, do you, be, if you are dog owners, nurse, just for the healthier dog. You know, make sure you don't, don't walk them in the middle of the day, day and make sure you don't, don't have them walking on asphalt. Like, like the tours when, when it's in the, the asphalt, it's like, it's like 120, 130 degrees. It burns their paw, paws or pads. So anytime we do walk, even later, later in the day, I will walk on the sidewalk and make sure the dog, the dog is in the grass, um, or I'll walk along the kind of, of you know, where the, um, you know, where the road, road meets the, the neighbor's first yard. I'll walk, walk along along that and have the have dog in this because it's 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 really intense. But but yeah, stay kind, hydrate, hydrate your friends, and, and um, please like the, this video. Come back and comment on the video um, when I get it all, all wrapped up. And definitely please tune in tomorrow. In tomorrow, I'll be sharing, sharing more information. And sorry, sorry of YouTube with the gecko um, that that really out of my control. But but anyway, I, I hope you guys are well. Stay safe and. Uh, Definitely give me a thumb, thumbs up, thumbs up. If you subscribe, hit the like button, follow us, and uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye, everybody. See you later, later, Instagram. And thanks, thanks Pat and Ron. Have a great day and stay, stay cool, everybody. Bye.